So according to your comments, I'm not the only one who loves color and is obsessed with rainbows. If you're one of those people who can't help but smile if you see a bunch of bright colors, especially if they're in rainbow order, then this bullet journal might be for you. But even if you're not into bullet journaling, you can use the same technique on your paintings, on your cards, even on your shopping lists. Why not make them pretty? If you don't enjoy shopping, that might help <laughs> to motivate you to go. <laughs> Because we all know that a rainbow makes a day more beautiful. That's just the nature's law. You, we can't do anything about it. So join me for some rainbow fun. So for the first weekly, I just painted some blobs on my spread that I previously divided into six sections, just with two small dots on each page. My bujo is gridded, so this makes it easier, but you could just measure yours and divide each page into three as well. Since the painted part is so spontaneous and loose, I wanted to balance it out with some more technical font that stands out nicely, so I used these stamps. I wanted to show you as many techniques and alternatives for lettering as possible, because I know some of you don't enjoy calligraphy and sometimes we don't feel as confident in our lettering and want an easy way out. This font is not particularly difficult to write, but stamps are a quick and easy fix. For the next page I went with drips. I love drips actually on other people's work, but never do it. I have to remember to put them into my paintings as well. One thing I would advise here is to put all the colors down first. That is if you want to have the same kind of drips with all the colors. Otherwise some will be long and others will be short and messy. That means you have to work a bit faster, but it's not that rushed and mixing colors is really satisfying. If you're not sure how to mix colors, watch one of my previous videos, I'll put a link in the description. For the lettering I used a stencil and black acrylic paint. I should have measured the parts before and masked the letters next to the one I'm using to protect the paint from seeping through the unwanted areas, but I was kind of sick and lazy so I didn't. <laughs> So this is what you get when you don't pay attention to those details. <laughs> you live, you learn. I guess this will become my mantra on this channel. Lastly, I added some highlights to the letters with white gel pen. For my third week, I drew large circles for the dailies. I could have used my compass, but I wanted to show you again how you can use any round object, which also has the advantage that you can see exactly how much room the circle will take before you actually draw it. So it's much easier to make a pleasing composition. If positioning is particularly challenging for you, you could also cut out seven large circles from recycled cardboard or paper and position them onto your page until you like it. After I painted the large circles, I added a bunch of smaller ones in different sizes and rainbow of colors around the page. I quite like how it turned out actually. I have sped this part quite some because I can imagine it wouldn't be fun to watch me draw or paint so many circles. They're quite good exercise for painting and drawing though. You gain a lot of control of your tool and many artists use them as warm-ups. I'm terrible with warm-ups as some of you already know, so I just cheat my brain with this. It thinks it's doing something important because it's my bujo, but it's still essentially just a practice of circles. Do you have a trick your brain or is just mine so uncooperative that it needs those tricks. The title of the month is freehanded with a brush and the titles of the weeklies are written with felt tip pen. This pen is sometimes called a brush pen but it has no bristles. It has a firm but flexible felt nib shaped in a conus. You could write this font with any kind of marker though. It's nothing that special. For the last week I needed some masks. I'm showing you here how I made them from plain old painter's tape. I took the white painter's tape that is about 5 cm or 2 inches and taped it onto the shiny side of a scrap piece of cardboard. This one is from Cookies. <laughs> I did that so I could round the corners and adjust the length and cut it into shapes. I just used rectangles because that was the easiest but you could make any kind of fancy shape out of it if you prefer. It would be easier if the shape is simple though, otherwise it could be sticky to peel it off. Then I taped the tape to my sleeve as you could see because that makes the tape less sticky so I won't tear my paper when I remove it. I peeled the tape from the cardboard and positioned it onto my bujo. Again the dots came in really handy when positioning it. If your bujo is plain you could mark where you want the dailies to go or you could just go rogue and intentionally tape them in all directions. If it's off let it be really off, that way it looks intentional. 
Before I start painting, or in this case splattering around, I tape the edges down really well so that the paint won't seep through. Then I add splatters. The larger the brush and the thinner the paint, the larger the splatters will be. I must say my inner child had lots of fun with this one. I love splatters. I should use them more often as well. <laughs> After everything was completely dry, I removed the tape. That is important. Don't try to remove the tape while the paint is still damp or you will damage the paper. For the titles of the days, I just used a thick technical pen, or you could use a fine liner. This one is 05 in size and I went with kind of playful font. I like to experiment with fonts in my bujo. I know it's more slick if the whole month is in exactly the same style with the exactly the same font, but that's just not me. <laughs> of course, you could choose one of the methods I show you here and do that kind of titles on all the pages to make them look more consistent. And that would look more sleek. <laughs> all stamped, all stenciled, all written in the same font, whatever you like. I like variety. I think that's my biology mind showing through. So I like to play with different ways and I also always liked when I could learn several techniques in one video. So I want to pay it forward. What do you prefer? The chaotic playful style or the sleek and elegant one? I probably should have splattered some more and added some bigger splatters with a brush, but you leave you learn. <laughs> you can do better than me now that you know. <laughs> and here's the final flip through of the whole month. If you haven't seen the video for the monthly, check it out. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. And I hope you found a technique or two worth trying, or at least enjoyed the rainbow of colors in this video. If you did, give me a like, of course, and subscribe for more artsy fun. I must say, I enjoy making this video more and more. Your encouragement really means a lot to me, and I love reading your comments. And from the technical standpoint, it is getting a bit easier now that I befriended my Sharky video editor. <laughs> So I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy making them. See you next week. Bye-bye.